Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we're going to begin the process of block sanding this 1969 Porsche 911. really bad light here it's directly overhead so forgive the funny lighting anyway behind me here is the blasphemy build which is a 1969 Porsche 911 uh, I've been working on this car for two years really two and a half years doing all the body work on it it's just been delivered to Costa Mesa collision and auto body here in Costa Mesa California um, I've done everything myself so far all the body work welded the rear quarter panels on repaired the rockers uh, put flares all the way around just did a ton of custom work, shaved the drip rails. What I haven't done is had some professional eyes on this thing uh, in terms of the body work. Let me give you a quick run through of where the body is at the moment. In this case, I put a super thick pass of primer on. It's got a bunch of runs all over the place. So the whole thing needs to be blocked down, but I figured more primer, the better at this stage. It'll fill all the low spots and hopefully I don't have too many high spots. For those of you unfamiliar with the build or the channel, this is the blasphemy build so-called because I'm putting a Subaru flat six twin turbo motor in it. But I've been working on this body for a couple of years now. I've got these amazing custom tail lights that are 3D printed. If you want to get all the details on what I've done to this car, go back and watch a few of the videos. But this thing had no rear end on it, it had no quarters. I've had to build all of this stuff from scratch. But you can see there's like runs all over the place, which I was never concerned about in this case. Like I knew that the more material on this thing, the better because we were going to be blocking it completely down uh, for this exact purpose. Um, I still have to do gaps fully, so I'll be doing those while I'm here as well and um, get that all dialed. Of course, everything has to be dialed before paint. I've seen the cars that go into their paint booth, which is right there, and they are utterly perfect before they go to paint. So I wanna make sure this thing has the exact same vibe to it. Let's get this tape off for the doors. Well, as predicted, Henry's a little bit too busy to help me right this second, but I did get some guide coat. I'm just gonna start cranking out. I'm actually really excited to get this thing guide coated and begin the final process. Now you guys are all probably familiar with this, but if you spray a darker color on your primer, as you sand, you can see where the primer is fresh. If there's low spots, it'll still show the darker color. Obviously, if there's high spots, you'll see bare metal. So you wanna sand until you can't see any more of the darker color, in this case, the guide coat. Once it's there and you get all of it just off, you can consider that you have a pretty flat panel. All right, I got a nice smooth door. One panel down, like 10 panels to go. So, small issue. When I asked these guys, I didn't have any spray guide coats, so they gave me a can of enamel paint. And like instantly, it completely, can you guys see this? It completely gums up your sandpaper. Like everybody says not to do it. Maybe I put too much on, I'm not sure. But I can't make a single pass without completely ruining uh, my first set of paper. So I'm actually gonna go with a lighter paper, like a 120, like, uh, so a, a paper that has more cut, just to get rid of the, like the big chunky stuff. And then I'm gonna go back to 180 to, you know, get it flat again. Question for you guys, does anybody know what these things are? They end up on cars all the time. This one has, it's all over the place now and this thing's only been outside for like a few minutes. And in fact, this is over my guide coat. So what is this yellow poo? Who's pooing? 
That's what I want to know. Who's pooing, everybody? Uh, okay, rear quarter is done. Right door is done. Making some progress. I'm going to try to do this flare before I do anything else. All right, I'm back for another day here. Um, hopefully this will be the last I have to do uh, before it gets into the pro's hands. But I was here and I wanted to make some progress. So we got a 180. Um, this thing picked up a little bit of surface rust that I just spent the last like hour and a half dealing with. But uh, I'm gonna hopefully block this side today. And then Henry says he's gonna get his guys on it in a couple of days. So I'm looking forward to like how the pros do it and for me not to do it. One step smoother, kind of hard to see in this shade, but this side looks gorgeous. I haven't yet primed. What I'm doing is spot priming any bare metal spots that are here. I also spent a little bit of time on this rear light. In fact, let's see how we did. The only way to really tell how this thing lurks, looks is to give it a prime and see how nice this line is coming along. Still needs a little bit of work, but actually I made it a lot better today. It's a lot cleaner than it was. This one still needs a bunch of work. It's not really that straight. Uh, I haven't done it though, that's why it's so dark. A few moments later. Uh, as you guys know, I've spent a million hours uh, sanding this car and blocking it and doing all the body work. And um, I thought that I've done a pretty good job, but uh, come here for one moment. Come hither. This is Willie. Willie doesn't speak any English whatsoever, but what he did do is go over all of my body work and he was just like, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno. So today we're gonna hopefully fix what I did because I'm an amateur and he's a pro. He's got golden hands. Uh, and we're gonna work on, we've got doors, we've got the fenders off, we've got the hood off and see how far we get. I think we're gonna probably put some more Bondo on the car and sand it off and do more blocking and guide code and all the things. So we're gonna get into it right now.
All right, folks, so we are back here with the car. Of course, Henry from Costa Mesa Collision is in the house. Uh, we're actually in his house now. Um, so first and foremost, very funny thing, Henry, he's got this uh, employee named Willie who you saw earlier in this video. Willie is this tiny little Mexican dude who doesn't speak any English. And you know, I walked in here going like, oh, this thing is gonna be perfect, we're gonna do it. He just walked around being like, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno. <laughs> No bueno. And it's just one more step in realizing that this is why people like Henry and Costa Mesa Collision exist, because they have guys that have these magical hands. You've been doing this now for what, 20, 30 years? More than that, yeah. 30, more than 30 years. And you just know what a straight yeah, panel can, feels like. You can run your hand on it and see where you have your low spots, high spots, that type of stuff. Willie and I spent the better part of a Saturday, you saw earlier in this video, sanding down the car uh, and blocking it to make it smoother and smoother and smoother. And now since then, uh, Henry, what have you done? It looks like there's another coat of primer on here. Well, uh, yeah, there's another coat of primer. We went ahead and fine-tuned some of the edges, uh, some of the scratches, and some of the low spots, high spots, that type of stuff. Um, Willie's gone over it pretty good. Uh, the areas that needed to be addressed more. Uh, and then we put the, a, a final coat of primer on it. Um, from here on, we can pretty much go with a really very fine sandpaper, just enough for the paint, to, the base coat to dry, the sealers and the base coats to dry. Okay. And then we go with a top coat, uh, you know, our, our base coat with our clear coat. I mean, so there's there's still a few spots that still need some help. Um, you guys have seen over the last two and a half years, this thing has had an enormous amount of custom work. So I don't feel that guilty about it not being completely the world's straightest thing. You know, if there's a bump in the quarter panel, it's like, all right, well, that's the first time I ever had to put a whole quarter panel on a car and, you know. Uh, so now that it gets Honestly, in the... I mean, what you've done is incredible. You've done an amazing job with it. For you being know, a dude very, in a garage. Very impressive. Very Thank impressive. you. Yeah. Um, so, but it's super exciting because at this point, the, the majority of heavy lifting has been done. Um, if we had to go through like sort of the, let's assume that all the, the big stuff we figured out and it's good. Um, I know I still need to do some gaps mm -hmm. on this. We've got the final coat of primer. Right. I may throw some stuff on today and see how I, how well I can That's get the gaps absolutely dialed. Absolutely advisable, just get all the gaps where you want to make sure that, because we're going to blow them back off anyway to jam it and paint the inside, outside, yeah. all that stuff. But we want to make sure all the lines are, 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 are gapped nice and you don't have no, no big you know, bugaboos after we, we have everything painted, you go line it up, and then all of a sudden your, your lines don't look perfect. Right, you know, that's right, the right. important, the important thing. Does it make sense to do that um, once we kind of block it a little bit more? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think right now, you're to the point where, yeah, you should probably put them on now. Okay. Uh, because if there's some, you know, sometimes we might have to cut a little bit off, you know, take a little material off of the, the gaps to make them right. Right, you know, right, or put some on, depending on. Or put on, some on, exactly. Yeah. Depending um, on where, and where then, we're at. Assuming all the big stuff is done, what are the, what, like, where does this go grit-wise to get to where we need it well, to Well, I mean, at this point now, we're, we're pretty much going to go with, uh, like, a 600, 600 grit. Oh, right out of, right out of yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're blocked enough now. If you look at your primer, there's no, it's, you know, it's, it's lovely. It's smooth. Yeah, yeah, it's like, this is, this feels yeah. like paint. It really so, looks like paint. Now you hit this with 600 and a guide coat, you know, because yeah. a guide coat will show you any scratches, deeper scratches. Yeah. Um, Especially at any kind of lighter colors, you're going to see those those uh, little fine scratches in the base coat. Right. If you don't address them, um, once you put the clear coat on it, you're too late. You can't you okay. can't fix it. You can't go back to fix this it. This hasn't been fully blocked yet. Like we haven't right. done the roof mm -hmm. and and part of the quarters. Like even as I walked up here, I saw oh I've got a little spot like right here. Yep. I see a spot. Yeah. I guess um, but this is all stuff that if, with guide coat will yeah. hopefully oh, yeah. smooth right Absolutely. out. Absolutely. That's, that's and we've your, got a little guide more. Guide coat will tell you. A little more work to do here, but I will say that when I brought this here, this line wasn't, it was no, kind of all over the place and angled. So the work we did on it last weekend was really mm -hmm. good. So it's much smoother now. And then this will blend and be a lot smoother once oh, we yeah. get the other yep, sandpaper on here. Yep. So, all right. Well, the next stages, guys, are that. Just uh, getting the, the pros to, to look at my hacky work and, and smooth it out as much Fine as we tune. can. Fine tune it the best we can. Fine tune it, and then um, maybe we can give them a demo the next time of your paint system. Sure, of course. And uh, we can show how it all kind of comes together in, in the end. It's so cool. Awesome. As always, thank you, sir. Oh, you Appreciate it. it, man. Yep, you got it, man. So as always, part of the progress here is just dialing this stuff in further and further and further. The amount of work 
to get this beautiful paint job is like mind boggling. It's, it's like, it literally has to be perfect before anything goes on the car. So I'm trying to stay patient with it as much as I can, as much as I want the thing in paint. I know it's in capable hands, so I've got to make sure that I stay as patient as I can. But if you guys could feel this, it is so lovely and smooth now uh, with this final coat of primer on it. So super exciting. So I've got a bit more of a gap here than I want on this front fender. I'm gonna try to give this thing a little bit of love, a couple of love taps to see if I can help it. This process of getting the gaps right is obviously uh, one of the most arduous things you can do. But now's the time before this final coat of primer, so it's perfect. So my intuition is correct. There is a right order to do this. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we are a couple hours into trying to get these gaps right, and it's not a huge mystery. New fenders, new door skins, new quarter panels. So everything is literally brand new for the first time. Now, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm not some German dude in 1969 who did this for a living. So we're having to do probably all the modifications that they would normally do to a brand new pressed steel metal car 50 years ago. Um, that includes uh, up to and including whacking it with a sledgehammer, enlarging holes, whacking it, you know, in all different manners to try to get all these panels to line up. And it's like, I, I you know, obviously I'm a rookie. However, none of this has ever been fit together before ever in the history of it. So, there's part of me that's kind of like, you know, even the factory used lead filler in a, a few different spots to make sure the gaps were right. Um, in this case, you know, it's all I can do. So we're gonna try to enlarge a couple of holes right now and um, a couple of holes here to see if I can get this fender to push in just a little bit more. If that doesn't work, I can put some filler on the leading edge of this and then add a little bit of weld to the inside of this fender and then shave off this uh, edge a little bit as well. But it's all in the interest of having like a perfect gap or as perfect as I can make it uh, on this car. I've got a stepped drill bit and uh, I'm gonna try to take these holes like one size larger on the inside of this fender so I can get a little bit more margin to push it in. Because what's happening now is that it's a little bowed out um, on this side and I can't quite get the gap as tight as I would like to. Anyway, it's all complicated because the moment you get one thing right, something else got whacked and uh, that's where we are right now.
closer here. Here's my gap on this side. The problem is we're a little bit too far out this way with the fender. You can see there's a little bit of stick out. It's hard to see, but that's the case. I don't want to close this video without at least showing you guys how close we are. I know it seems like I'm sort of sky is falling, but we're, we're in the millimeter world at this point. It looks really, really nice all the way down. I've got just a little baby lip happening right here, but overall I'm getting really, really excited about how this thing is flowing. But just like everything else on this car, it is a ton of work. All right, gents, well, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Um, the time span, I think it's been like two weeks of what you just saw between us working on blocking the thing and now. So, I'm at the mercy. Uh, as the adage goes, you can have it good, fast, or cheap. Pick two out of three. So, not fast, but I wanted to give you guys some content. I'm going to wrap this video up now. Um, but it's coming out great. So, I'm totally fine with it. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you think of this. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And uh, I will see you next time.